Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to check out block storage. Block storage is awesome because it allows you to, well, store things. Block storage is cheap, it's easy to set up, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add block storage to your Linode instance. Let's get started. So here I am on my Linode dashboard, and right here I have a backup server. That's why I named it, because this is going to be my backup server. Now, an issue that I have here, though, is that I only have 25 gigs of storage. To be fair, I probably could fit at least some backups within this storage, but not all that much. And we have to keep in mind that this storage is also shared with the operating system itself, so block storage would be a very, very, very good idea for this backup server. So let's go ahead and set up a volume that we can use for the actual backups that's separate from the operating system. That's definitely a good practice. Now right here we have a section for volume, so I'm going to click on that. And this is for block storage actually, which is really cool. So here in the volume section, it'll actually show you a list of volumes that you might have on your account. In my case, I actually don't have any right now. So what I'm going to do is create one. So I'll create a volume. So what I'll do here is just give it a label. I'll just call it backup disk. That's what I'll call my volume because, well, I will be sending backups to it. So here we have the size. Of course, we can go down if we'd like. So for example, 10 gigabytes is just $1 a month. That's very reasonable. But in my case, I'm going to need more than that. So what I'm going to do is bump this up to 50 gigabytes. I can resize this later if I'd like to add more. So I think 50 is probably a good number for this. And on your end, what you'll do is just adjust this to whatever your use case happens to be. I'll leave mine at 50. I think that's good enough. And now when it comes to region, what we want to do is we want to create this in the same region that our Linode has been created in, in particular the Linode instance that we plan on using this with. So what I did was I created mine in Toronto. So I'm going to choose that right here. So my Linode is in Toronto and my volume will also be there as well. And right here, what we could do is actually select the node that we want to add this volume to. So what I'm going to do is select backup server. And I'm going to leave the rest blank. Let's go ahead and create the volume. Now, this is really cool. Linode is giving us the commands that we would need to use to use this volume. So we don't even have to Google it. That's pretty cool. We get this message right here that the volume was created successfully. It was being created in the background. And what I'm going to do is copy this command right here. And then we'll switch to a terminal. And on my end, I'm already connected to the backup server via SSH. You could use the Lish console if you'd like, it really doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do is type lsblk. I want to see whether or not that volume is actually being shown here as an option. And look at this. We have SDC, it's a 50 gig disk. And that's the exact number that I created it with. And it's ready to go. So I'll paste in the first command. I just stole this right from the dashboard. And I will need sudo for this, so I'll just add that to the beginning of the command. So what we're going to do is make a file system, specifically ext4. And then we have this line right here, which corresponds to where that backup disk is actually located on the file system. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and format it. I'll type in my super secret password. And I might want to type it incorrectly. That's important. And there we go. As you can see, that was very fast. The ext4 file system has been created on the volume, and I should be ready to mount it. So what I'm going to do here is copy this command. It's going to make a new directory for me. Of course, I'll need sudo because I'm logged in as a normal user and not root in this case. And I want to create this directory right here. I have to have a place to mount that disk to if I want to go ahead and use it. So I'll just make this directory. And now that's created. Next, what we're going to do is mount the volume. This will actually allow us to use it. And before I do that, I'm going to run df-h. This will show all the file systems that I have on the Linode currently. We have the root file system right here. It's currently 12% used. We have some system file systems here that we're going to ignore. But this right here is our main storage medium. This is the Linux file system. 
But we don't have anything here for the new disk that we've created, and the reason why is because we have yet to mount it. So let's paste in the next command. Paste it right here after I type sudo. And what we're going to do is mount this volume, and we'll mount it to this directory right here. Now, as you can see, we have a new item here when I run the disk free command, the df-h command. It's showing me that I have this volume mounted. It's 49 gigs, you know, roughly the same. 1% used, basically not used at all. And it's located here at slash mnt slash backup hyphen disk exactly as we intended. Now, the next thing we need to do is grab this right here. So the thing is, when I reboot this Linode instance, that volume will not be mounted again by default. I'll have to run that last command again if I want to get it mounted next time. But it would be a lot better if it would automatically mount it, which is preferable. So what I'm going to do is run sudo, then nano. And what I want to do is edit slash etsy slash fs tab. So we're going to edit that file with the text editor. It doesn't really matter which one. And here we have the file. So what I'm going to do in my case is I'm going to paste it right here at the end. And this is the last line that I copied from the dashboard. And it's wrapped a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what we're telling the system to do by adding this line, we're telling the system to look for this disk at boot up. When it's found, we want it to be mounted here. And then we call out the file system as ext4. That's the same file system that I formatted it with. And then we have our default options here, which includes read and write. We have no access time and no fail. And I'm not going to go over everything about the FS tab file right now, but essentially all this is doing is allowing us to automatically have that mounted every time we boot the server. So I'll hold control, press O, that brings up the write dialog, enter to save it, and then control X to exit out. Now, what I like to do at this point, before I reboot the Linode instance, just as a precaution, is I first want to test the mounting process to make sure that there's no typos. And one way that we could do that is we can actually unmount the volume right now. We could do that with the umount command. And we just type the directory where it's mounted to. So it's mounted here at slash mnt slash backup disk. I want to unmount it. And now, as you can see, it's gone. The next command that I'm going to give you is sudo mount a. I want to mount everything. So whatever you put in the FS tab file, as long as you don't have it set to manually be mounted, this should automatically mount everything. So I'll just press enter. Let's check the storage again, and it's back. And the reason why I decided to unmount it and then run this command to mount it again is because that's a way to test the FS tab file. That way you know there's no errors. I'm assuming that you wouldn't want to discover that there's errors during the boot process, because if you have an error in the FS tab file, that'll actually hang the boot up process. So by doing this, we're actually testing it right now, and we should be good to go. If I reboot the server, then that volume should be automatically mounted from here on out. And now, if I'd like, I could send my backups to this directory since I do have this volume mounted. So now let's take a look at detaching the volume from a Linode instance. And there's many use cases why you might want to do this. One of which is if, for example, you build a brand new server, you can detach the volume from this server and then reattach it to the other one, which makes data transfer, well, very easy since you aren't actually transferring anything. You're just attaching the volume to a different instance. And that's a very good use case. It's actually faster than rsync in a lot of cases. So what we're going to do first and foremost is unmount that again. So what I'll do is type sudo umount yet again. We're going to unmount that particular volume. And now it's unmounted. So now let's go back to the cloud dashboard. And we'll go back to Linode's. Actually, I need to close this first. We'll go back here, click on our backup server. We could scroll down. And then under storage, you can see a section for volumes right here. Now, first and foremost, we have disks. These are the internal disks. We have the root file system, and we also have a swap volume right here. But this one, this is our new volume, our block storage volume. So what I'm going to do is just click this button right here, and I'm going to detach it. 
is telling us that this operation could cause data loss and to please power off the Linode first or make sure that it isn't currently being written to, which we just did because I unmounted it. So there's no way that this volume could actually be being written to. So I'll detach it. It's telling me that it started. Now let's check our instance. I will run lsblk again. And as you can see, SDC is missing. That makes sense. I detached it. So I was able to do that. So now what I'm going to do is actually resize the volume. Let's just assume that I've filled it up. I mean, I didn't actually store anything there quite yet. But in the future, maybe I will. Maybe I will need to grow this volume to 100 gigabytes or something. Maybe I want to keep more of my backups before I age them out. There's all kinds of reasons why you might want to actually upgrade the storage, the most common of which being that, well, maybe it's full. So what we could do is we can click on the three dots right here and we can resize the volume. Currently it's at 50. So what I'm going to do is actually double it. This makes the cost $10 a month. And I really like the fact that it gives you the cost right here. It makes it very easy to understand what the impact to your bill is going to be if you were to do this. And I'm okay with that $10 a month, so I will click Resize Volume. So now it's telling us to unmount the volume. We've already done that, so we can skip that step. Next, it's asking us to do a file system check. That would be a good idea. And then it gives us the other commands here as well. So I'm going to close this for now because I actually need to attach this volume to the Linode instance before I could do any of this. So I'll close this here. And here we have the backup disk. I'm going to attach it yet again, and I'll attach it to the same one that we were already working with, the backup server. Now it should be connected. And I'll click Show Config. It'll bring up the commands again. So that's how you get back to the commands if you need to do so. Now that it's attached, we can go ahead and work through the rest of the commands here. And then what I'll do, we'll go back here to the server. And sure enough, we have the disk right here. It's not mounted yet. And that's good because we don't want to mount it unless we're finished with the process. Enlarging it in the dashboard is just step one. There's actually a few things that we need to do here on the instance to prepare it for use again. So what I'll do is actually follow the instructions that we were given. The instructions are also in the documentation as well. So if for some reason you click off of it like I did, you can easily get back to the instructions. And in fact, the documentation article that matches this video has all the instructions in there. So that should be the one place you would need to go to get those instructions. So what it asked us to do was run a file system check. I will again use sudo and we want to run e2fsck-f then slash dev, then slash disk, by ID. And I just auto completed it by hitting tab. So we have the path here to the volume itself. Again, it's not mounted, so I'm able to do this check. Let's go ahead and run it. So as you can see, it was very fast. And that makes sense. I'm not really using it yet. It's just a good idea to run a file system check. It's not required, but you may as well understand whether or not there's errors and have this command fix those errors if there's file system errors. Thankfully for us, there's no problem here, so we should be good to go. Next, what we're going to do is run the resize2fs command, which looks just like that. And then we're going to call out the path yet again, so slash dev, slash disk, and then by ID. And there's the disk. I'll press enter. And so far, so good. So next what I'm going to do is run sudo mount a, which again will mount that volume since we do have it listed in the FS tab file. And if this works, I should have a lot more space there than I had before. So let's see. No errors. That's a good sign. And as you can see, we do have more space on this volume right now, which is great. That means that we can resize the volume if ever we need to and grow it to a new size if we use up all the space. And I was able to do that without actually shutting down the server. I just unmounted it, we resized it, and then we remounted it. And now it's available with more space. Next, what I'm going to do is show you how to delete a block storage volume. 
Now first, as always, if we're going to do anything like that, we should really unmount it first. Which I've done. And as you can see, it's no longer mounted. And right now, it's showing that it's attached to the backup server. So what we'll need to do is detach it first. And we're waiting for this to clear. It's still showing that it's attached to the backup server. And now it's unattached. So what we can do is go ahead and delete it. Be very careful, of course. If you have any important data on that volume, you absolutely want to make sure that you not only back it up, but test that backup as well. Assuming that you're very sure that you no longer need it, you can go ahead and delete it. And it's that easy. Here I have no volumes in my account. I could always create a new one in the future if I need it again, but for right now, I've emptied it out. And now you know how to not only create volumes, you know how to attach them, detach them, and also how to delete them. And not to be outdone, we also resized a volume as well, which is, well, something we have to do every now and then. Our data needs change over time, and we need our storage to grow with us. So thankfully, we are able to resize our volumes as well. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful in getting you set up with block storage. It's a powerful feature. And maybe let us know in the comments down below what you are using your block storage for. I think it'll be a lot of fun to see what clever ideas you guys have come up with. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you again next time.